The Pleasant Valley War may not be the most renowned showdown, but it stands out as the most violent blood feud in the history of the Old West. As the United States expanded westward, feuds dotted the open range like a shotgun blast. Pioneers saw the expansive land as a tremendous opportunity to build herds, yielding substantial profits for ranchers. In this world of open spaces and lawless opportunities, cattle often held more value than human blood. One of the prominent conflicts involved frequent disputes between sheepmen and cattlemen, competing for control of the range for their herds. The historical theme of cattle versus sheep played out prominently in the Old West. Cattlemen believed that sheep destroyed the range for cattle grazing, although modern evidence suggests potential benefits from cattle and sheep grazing together. However, such nuanced perspectives were absent during that time. The ensuing violence from these disputes became the stuff of legends. Arguably, the most notorious range feud unfolded as the Pleasant Valley War. This conflict, alternatively known as the Tonto Basin War, the Rim Country War, or the Tewksbury Graham Feud, ravaged the Tonto Basin from 1882 to 1892. The precise number of casualties in this feud remains uncertain, but Eduardo Obregón Pagán, in his work Valley of the Guns, estimates that between 24 and 50 men lost their lives marking it potentially as the bloodiest range war in American history. Although the details of the feud are obscured, perplexing, and often contradictory, certain facts emerged to shed light on the harrowing bloodshed that characterized the Pleasant Valley War. The Tewksburys and Grahams started off as allies. The key players in this feud, the Tewksbury and Graham families, didn't always have a hostile relationship. Leading the Tewksburys was the widowed patriarch, James Dunning Tewksbury. Originally from Boston, Tewksbury had married a Native American woman, possibly Shoshone, and together they had four sons. In 1882, one of the Tewksbury sons, Edwin, befriended the Graham brothers. Hailing from Northern Ireland via Iowa, the Grahams were exploring Arizona for ranching opportunities. Edwin encouraged them to settle in Pleasant Valley, Arizona, and they did so in 1882. Both families worked for the same outfits, engaged in cattle herding, and notably, were involved in cattle rustling. The feud kicked off with a betrayal. John Stinson, aspiring to establish a cattle empire in Pleasant Valley, enlisted the help of the Tewksburys and the Grahams for herding his cattle. Unbeknownst to Stinson, both the Grahams and the Tewksburys engaged in cattle rustling from his herd. The scheme was straightforward. Stinson branded his cattle with a letter T. The rustlers then rebranded over the T with a new mark, which the Tewksburys and Grahams asserted as their own. However, even as Stinson's herd dwindled, John Graham officially registered the brand in his own name, effectively betraying his partners. The Grahams, as a result, laid claim to the ownership of all the stock, executing a double cross. This angered the Tewksburys, prompting them to retaliate by applying their own brands to rustled cattle. The conflict even escalated to the point where they started rustling each other's cattle. The initial death resulted from pneumonia. Around the same time as the double cross, one of Stinson's supervisors, John Gilliland, was looking into the diminishing herds and suspected both families of rustling Stinson's property. In January 1883, he confronted both parties at the Tewksbury's ranch. In a fit of rage, Gilliland shot at Edwin Tewksbury but missed. Tewksbury retaliated injuring two of Gilliland's companions. Gilliland filed murder charges, but the court dismissed them, stating no murder had occurred. The grand jury even asserted that Gilliland had provoked the fight. However, on the journey back from the court in Prescott, one of the Tewksbury brothers, Frank, contracted pneumonia and passed away. The Tewksburys held Gilliland and Stinson responsible for Frank's death. Those affiliated with Stinson, therefore, were deemed unreliable. The conflict between sheep and cattle was just an intensification. To exacerbate the situation, Stinson at some point opted for a divide-and-conquer strategy against the Tewksbury's and the Grahams. As per historian Don Didera in 1884, Stinson reached an agreement with the Grahams to serve as range detectives in identifying rustlers. In return, they were compensated with cattle. Stinson's goal was to turn the Grahams against the Tewksbury's, his plan succeeded. The Grahams proceeded to betray their former friends and partners once again. In response, the Tewksbury's escalated by taking a drastic step. They traveled to Flagstaff, 
acquired sheep, and released them on the range. By 1887, the tension in Pleasant Valley was on the brink of erupting into violence and bloodshed. Cherry Creek divided Pleasant Valley, with the Grahams to the west and the Tewksburys to the east. In February 1887, a Ute herder, hired by the Tewksburys to oversee their sheep, was discovered murdered and decapitated. The Tewksburys enlisted Native American trackers to locate the perpetrator, tracing the tracks of a horseman back to the Graham Ranch. This event triggered a bewildering series of violent ambushes and vendettas. The conflict extended beyond just the Tewksburys versus the Grahams. Nearly everyone in the valley was drawn into choosing sides. Prominent on the Graham side was the Blevins family, known for their questionable rustling and violent activities. Also heavily involved was the infamous hash knife outfit of the Aztec Land and Cattle Company. They sided with the Grahams as a cattle company seeking to claim land for their herds, with the Tewksburys standing in their way. In the process, the hash knife terrorized sheepmen through threats or actual violence, resulting in the killing of flocks. As the feud escalated, more individuals joined the fray, including the renowned hired gun, Tom Horn. Despite claiming neutrality, Horn was friends with the Tewksburys. The Tewksburys' top gunfighter, Jim Roberts, was estranged from the Grams because they had been stealing his horses. The feud was about to enter its most violent phase. Ironically, by this point, Stinson had left Pleasant Valley, perhaps realizing he had unleashed a monster. The initial major clash occurred because the Graham faction couldn't secure a complimentary meal. In August 1887, members of the Hash Knife Outfit, the Blevins family, and other Graham supporters set out to locate missing members of their faction. Interestingly, no Grahams were found. Armed to the teeth, the group arrived at a ranch owned by the Wilson family, only to discover Jim and Ed Tewksbury inside. Hoping to avoid violence, the party requested entry to have a meal. A tense exchange ensued before the Tewksbury's inside opened fire. In the altercation, two members of the Graham faction were immediately killed and two others were wounded. One of the wounded, a man named Thomas Tucker, managed to escape and crawled to a nearby ranch where he received care. By that point, blowflies had infested his wounds. Subsequent to this encounter, the Tewksbury's committed further homicides against the Grahams. On September 2, 1887, Jim Roberts, accompanied by several members of the Tewksbury family, was at the Lower Tewksbury Ranch on Cherry Creek. Both the Tewksburys and Grahams had three ranches in the valley. Around 20 Graham supporters, led by Andy Cooper Blevins, launched an attack on the ranch. The attacking party included Tom and John Graham, Moat Roberts, unrelated to Jim, and Charlie and John Blevins. Some accounts even suggest that George W.P. Hunt, a future governor, might have been among the attackers. Historians have conflicting accounts regarding who was present inside the sturdy walled cabin on that day. One version claims Ed Tewksbury and John Rhodes were there while J.D. was in Prescott. Another version suggests J.D. and Lydia were in Phoenix. Yet another account proposes that Ed and Jim, along with Jim Roberts, were at their mountain hideaway, avoiding arrest warrants, while John Rhodes was at the Tewksbury headquarters. Others within the cabin included John Tewksbury's pregnant wife, Mary Ann, J.D.'s wife, Lydia, her 12-year-old son, and their two youngsters, aged three and six. The Graham supporters positioned themselves on the opposite side of Cherry Creek in the brush and lay in wait. After breakfast, John Tewksbury and Bill Jacobs went out to round up the horses. Several shots were fired, and the two men collapsed to the ground, shot from behind. One of the gunmen approached Tewksbury, firing three additional shots into him and then grabbing a large rock to smash his head. The attackers continued to shoot into the cabin throughout the day. They briefly paused to declare the deaths of John Tewksbury and Jacobs, but they denied the Tewksbury men access to see the bodies. Allegedly, Lydia, her young son, and possibly Mary Ann were allowed to view the bodies. Mary Ann Tewksbury later claimed she pleaded with Tom Graham to permit her to bury her husband and Jacobs, but he refused. It seems the Graham supporters believed the Tewksburys had killed Old Man Blevins and then left his body for wild hogs to devour. In response, Tom Graham stated, No, the hogs have got to eat them. There were reports that Andy Cooper Blevins wanted to scalp Tewksbury, but Tom Graham prohibited it. 
knowing that initiating scalping could lead to retaliatory actions from the opposing side. Cooper also expressed a desire to burn the cabin, but the presence of women and children prevented the others from allowing it. Amidst the chaos, John Rhodes managed to slip away, avoiding the snipers and made his way to the mountain hideaway to alert Jim Roberts, Joe Boyer, and Jim Tewksbury. Roberts then hurried to Payson to summon Justice John Meadows and a posse. Rhodes, Tewksbury, and Boyer hurried back to the siege but were forced to retreat by intense rifle fire from the Graham supporters. They managed to secure a position atop a nearby hill, enabling them to return fire and support Ed, who was firing from inside the cabin. Assistance did not arrive for 11 days. Snipers lingered for several days taking shots at anyone attempting to leave the cabin. The men gathered wood and fetched water under the cover of night. According to some accounts, Marianne defied the snipers who targeted her feet with rifle shots during the day. She ventured out at night and, given the rocky ground that made digging graves difficult, covered the bodies with bedsheets anchored with rocks to prevent hogs from devouring them. When the posse finally arrived, the snipers had departed and the remains of the two deceased men were placed in an Arbuckle coffee crate and interred in a single grave. Ten days after the confrontation, Marianne gave birth to her baby boy and named him John in memory of her late husband. The Tewksburys were understandably resentful. In hindsight, Jim Tewksbury expressed his disdain, saying, No damn man can kill one of my brothers, stand watch over him for the hogs to devour, and live within a mile and a half of me. The most renowned shootout in the feud had its roots in an unrelated incident. The infamous confrontation unfolded when Commodore Perry Owens, the sheriff of Apache County, sought to apprehend Andy Blevins, also known as Andy Cooper, one of the men involved in the siege on the Tewksbury house. Indeed, Andy had openly boasted about killing one of the Tewksburys. Owens, who was in Pleasant Valley, likely received pressure from county officials to arrest Blevins. Meanwhile, Cooper got wind of Owens's presence and took refuge in a three-room cottage with his relatives. Owens prepared his Winchester rifle and approached the house. Using a warrant for Blevins' arrest related to an unrelated charge of horse theft, Owens called for Blevins to surrender. Cooper cautiously opened the door, but he was armed. A fierce shootout ensued, during which Owens shot Cooper through the door and then killed two more individuals, Moat Roberts and the teenage Samuel Houston Blevins, who had seized Cooper's gun. He also severely wounded Johnny Blevins with five shots, solidifying Perry Owens' legendary status in Old West lore. The Pleasant Valley War was a true fight to the last man standing, persisting for several years beyond the intense bloodshed of 1887. Despite efforts by authorities to quell the violence, it lingered on, leading to the authorities resorting to killing more men in their attempts to restore peace. Eventually, by 1892, the only surviving participants were Tom Graham and Edwin Tewksbury. At this juncture, Tom, rumored to be one of the Grahams seeking to avoid further bloodshed, departed for Tempe, aiming to leave the haunting memories of the blood feud behind. However, Edwin had different intentions and intercepted Tom on the road as he was hauling a load of grain, allegedly shooting him, possibly with the help of accomplice John Rhodes. Edwin swiftly returned to Tonto Basin to establish an alibi. Before succumbing to his injuries, Tom identified Edwin and Rhodes as the assailants, a testimony corroborated by multiple witnesses. Edwin underwent trial, where he was initially found guilty. Due to a technicality, there was a retrial, leading to a jury finding him innocent. The prosecution eventually decided to drop the case. Edwin Tewksbury stood as the last survivor in the lingering Pleasant Valley War, passing away from tuberculosis in 1904.